the older I get, I'm just a puss, man. I need a man up. I used to be so aggressive. Well, you're a big dude. You're strong. That's why nobody messes with me. Oh, uh, so they leave you alone. Yeah, so you and become that's a pussy how I, because of it. Yeah, you know what it's like. It's like, um, like, like you, you like fight and all that stuff. Like, I can't even like if somebody punched me in the face today, I don't know how it would react. Like, I don't know. I used to be a bouncer at clubs. I played college football. Like, I was a tough dude. Now you're after, falling apart, I, dude. Gonna get you to a gym. No, no, no. I'm in shape. But, but I mean, like a fight gym. No, no. Uh, why? No. Learn how to fight a little bit. No. Not to fight people. Well, why do you? So you don't worry about it. I, d- I never worry about it. Okay. Well, then don't worry about Cause it. Because I'm at home by 830. <laughs> <laughs> Sleeping by nine. Why do you do stand up? I know. I saw you at the improv the other night. I know. Nobody's going to jump on stage. I'm talking about you family. You man. You never know. People are crazy. Has that, anyone? That j- dude jumped up on uh, the WWF and uh, attacked. Yeah. Uh, who did he attack? Bret Hart. He attacked Bret yeah, Hart. During his like, speech. That's right. crazy. Bret yeah, Hart has got to be like, how old is he now? 61 and he's That's a stroke survivor. So fucked yeah. up. And the guy tackled him. Yeah. Jesus Christ. But, but Joe, seriously, you think anybody's going to jump on stage when you're on? Some dude could easily. Dude, you would fucking kill him. No, there's, there's a lot of people that can kill me. Don't get confused. No, I, was, <laughs> I know a lot of them. <laughs> Did I have them in here all the time? Yeah, I get that. But like, I... I, I, I just don't see me doing stand-up talking about family and love and a dude goes, I hate family and love. I'm going to jump up no, there. No, it's, it's not rational. No, yeah. you're right. I mean, a rational person wouldn't do that, but you're not worried about rational people anyway. Okay, so so say I started to go to a fight gym. Like, where would I start at? Like, what um, would I do? I would say you should try jujitsu because it's fun. It's really good exercise. And you learn some stuff. Like, okay. You learn how to do it. It's, it's a technique-based art. Whereas, like, say if... Um, if you like, there's there's guys that I will uh, do jujitsu sparring. We call rolling. Okay. There's guys that I will roll with that are weaker than me, smaller than me, and tap me every time I roll with them. And I'm a black belt. Okay. Like that's reality. Like if there's there's guys out there that are 150 pounds that I can roll with that I know will tap me virtually every time we roll because their technique is sharper. They train more often than I am. They're more focused. They're more in the groove. But I also heard you say, like on one of your podcasts, you got to watch out who you train with because they might just try to hurt you. That's true. So I need, I need. You got to go to a good school with good ethics because yeah. a good school with good ethics, they get rid of those guys. They do you know? Us, do you know one in Studio City? I'll do it. Sure, I'll get you. A yeah, spot. no, I'll, find I, a spot. I'll do it. I want to well, learn. There's a good spot just a little further than that in Tarzana. Okay, uh, Machado's where I got my black belt. Uh-huh. It's uh, John Jacques Machado. I train there sometimes, and um, he used to have a place in Malibu, but it closed down because of the fires. Um, but they um, they have an outstanding gym. It's like one of the best in the country, and it's in that area. Like as far as teaching, yeah, top notch. Like, but there's a lot of really good jujitsu schools now. It's not like um, like when I started in '96, it was hard to find a good gym. There was only like five of them in all of California, right? Because or, uh-huh. or, it was just starting out. It's like '93 is when jujitsu sort of emerged in the public consciousness because of the UFC, and then they, the gym started like popping up, popping up. But I was really lucky. There was like Hicks and Gracies, which is where I took my first class, and then uh, Carlson Gracies. I thought they were like the same, and the other one was closer, so I just switched to Carlson's. Mm-hmm. I didn't know shit. You know, I was a white belt. But and then there was Machado's and then like a couple other places. How but long does it take you to get to a black belt? Like for you, some I'm, guy. It took me a long time. I was a brown belt for eight years, but it was just because I wasn't training as much as I should have. Like they, you don't, they don't give them away. Like you have to be a real black belt. But which who, means who decides? What is somebody just watches instructors, you? Yeah, and you do. People know. Okay, people, everyone knows. It's like. Like, you know when a guy is fucking killing, like, like he, let's take like Theo Vaughn, for example. Yeah. Like the, Theo, love I love him. He hit a groove some time ago, whether it's two years ago or whatever it was. And I remember being in the back of the store and I was like, dude, this motherfucker's on fire. Yeah. He started hitting that groove that where, where you go and sit down, you want to watch his set, yeah. you know? And I think when that happens in jujitsu, it's the same kind of thing. Guys start talking about like, dude, Mike has been tapping everybody. Uh-huh. Dude, he's just, his, his jujitsu is so sharp. And you're like, man, I'm going to watch him roll. And then you watch him roll. You're like, dude, that pass, that guard pass. And guys start asking like, how often are you training? And I'm going five days a week now. Really? Yeah. And I'm taking two privates. Fuck. Uh-huh. Like, and then you know, like this guy is on the quest and you'll see a guy go from white belt to black belt in three years but they have to be ex- super exceptional like really unusual athletes unusual mindset unusual discipline it can happen 
most of the time, like a, a garden variety estimate is like 10 years is realistic okay. from white belt to black belt for a regular person. If you really train hard and you really dedicate yourself. But freaks can get there quicker. Like BJ Penn, he won the Mundials, which is the world championships after three years of training. Three years of training, he was a black belt, won the world championships. I won't be doing that. BJ's a special guy, though. And I he's just, also got legs that are like arms. He, he has leg dexterity like no one on the planet. Yeah, it's I got pr- chicken ridiculous. legs. Uh, yeah, That's actually have... good. Is it really? Yeah. You could cinch up triangles on people with chicken legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. And Darcy's, I'll be cinching up people everywhere. If you would just think about it in terms of leverage, guys with longer limbs like uh, Hodger Gracie is a perfect example. He's a really tall, long guy. He's one of the best jiu-jitsu players ever. They can do things with those limbs that a shorter person can't do. In terms of like leverage from joints and stuff like that. there's like there's advantages to every frame. Like there's a guy like Husamar Palhara is a famous like tank of a guy. He's yeah. like five seven, two hundred plus pounds, and just rips guys' legs apart. And he uses this like short style to dive in on people's legs and get them in heel hooks and uh-huh. knee bars and rip their legs apart. He's terrifying. Yeah, and that that style heavily favors being built like a, a, a little tank. Whereas like that long, like you are, you're a tall, long guy. You would have like good darts chokes, good rear nakeds, good, uh, good arm bars, good triangles. You would have length and leverage with that length, especially with triangles. Cause long legged guys, they can like, sometimes a guy like me with short legs, like I'll, I'll get my legs crossed yeah. and I have to adjust a lot to be able to cinch up my triangle. Whereas you might be able to just close it up right there so you'll have like more opportunities for triangles because of the length of your limbs have you would you have ever been at a point in your in your career when you were doing jiu-jitsu where you how would you have been in the ufc like at your prime like i have no idea i have no idea i would have had to have gotten way better like when I was fighting, I was just kickboxing. Yeah, I was kickboxing, and first of all, first it was taekwondo, and then it went to kickboxing. And by the time the UFC came around, like on the ground, I was useless. Okay, I was a straight white belt. I would get ripped apart every day. I would go to the gym, and if I if I tapped anybody, like if it was like a a, a week went by and I tapped one guy, I'd be like, "Whoa, I fucking tapped a guy." <laughs> yeah, you know, I wasn't tapping anybody. <laughs> there wasn't that many people doing it, you know. So I was going with like there was a couple of white belts maybe, and then there was like blue belts and purple belts and brown belts and those guys would always tap me gotcha. and so that's just how it went for a long time when you're you know unless you're some kind of freak like some big ass football player or some like super athlete you're probably not gonna be able to hold these guys off they're, they're gonna they're gonna choke you now was it true you're gonna uh fight wesley snipes that was way later though way later that was a brown belt by then and i'd been doing a lot of training. would you have beaten him i don't know because we, we never did he never it. Did He's it, a right? real martial artist. He's okay. a real martial artist. But he doesn't know jujitsu. The thing is... But that is, must have been exciting, though, for you was super you exciting. Yeah. Because I was thinking, like, I knew that he was a real legitimate martial artist. Like, he throws kicks and punches, and it looks really good. Mm-hmm. Like, he really does know his shit. But I also know he never fought. And there's a big difference between throwing kicks and and I haven't fought in a long time, but I probably fought a hundred times. Yeah. So like I I've been I've felt that nerves. I know what that's like. I, it'll be crazy as fuck to do it again. That's what I was thinking. I mean, it'll probably scare the shit out of me. But I think I know what to do. Like yeah. I think I know how to like get in there and start fainting, start giving some movement, and see how he reacts. And then the worst case scenario is like I'm like in a scramble, I'm gonna strangle this guy. <laughs> like if this if this comes to a scramble, yeah. Because the the average person really doesn't know how helpless they are until a jujitsu black belt grabs a hold of you, and then you just go, oh shit. Like, I'm helpless. Because in a fight, it, you really think like you might be able to punch a guy. Like, maybe if he's fronting me and he's swinging at me and I'm swinging at him, maybe I hit him first. You really think that. But there's no swinging. If, if it's a jujitsu fight, if, if, if you guys get into some sort of a tussle and that guy grabs you and trips you and boom, and he's on the ground with his hand on your jacket and a knee on your chest, you're a dead man. 
You're a dead man because there's no lucky shots. Yeah. A jujitsu black belt is just going to close the distance like that evil fucking crab, and he's just going <laughs> to squeeze your fucking neck. And there's no way you're going to avoid it, and there's no way you're going to survive it. You're just not going to. That's why you don't fight people. Like, like well, you definitely can't don't fight, fight people, like, but I'm just... You can't fight random people on the streets. Like, when you're young, that was a thing. You could go to bars. Yeah. If you, like, I, I, I had some friends that liked to throw down when I was younger and I, I wouldn't do it. I was watching but good for you now it's kind of like you got to watch everybody because you don't know what kind of training they're doing like you everybody's so do. educated on it, and it's so big right now well some guy fought off a, a guy in the subway that was attacking with a knife with some moves that he learned watching the UFC he never even trained before he just knew what to do yeah he like knew what to do because he had seen guys like get the mount and, and drop ground and pound he like knew what to do based on watching it yeah, I, I think it's good. Like when when you mention it, I think it's good just to learn, so you would feel better about yourself in case danger comes. Yeah, you man, know? you want to be the person that gets to make the decision. Here's the thing, right? If you don't know how to fight, and there's some drunk asshole who doesn't know how to fight either, but he might come over and punch you in the face and mm -hmm. sucker punch you, and he could hurt you or knock you out in front of your woman. You want to be the one who gets to decide. Yeah. If I'm in a situation and some guy and he's like reasonably close to my size and he's being an asshole and he's drunk and he gets aggressive with me, I can decide what to do with him. Mm -hmm. Like I can, it gets, I, I don't want to hurt anybody, but I'm not going to let you hurt me. Yeah. And you get to decide. Like you don't want like you've ever, we've all seen these Seven Eleven fucking parking lot oh, fights yeah. on YouTube where some asshole and both of them don't know how to fight but one guy might fuck that guy up he might kick him in the face while he's down you don't want to be that guy yeah like you don't want to be in that situation and definitely walk away whenever you can like, always 